got a lot of the um, construction workers coming down. So it's going. They're all happy, so. Everybody happy, so it goes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you have enough money, we'll see. She knows. Money's money. Money counts, money goes, we'll get more next Thursday. Right? That's right. Don't <laughs> let it through. Good. That's okay. I can wait. Well, lay it down. Wait. She's going through here. Oh, are you? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that. That's okay. I didn't know that. Do you want to sign my position? Do you want to sign my position unanimous like Kurt did? It doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's to be helpful for us. It's to be helpful for us. It's like Kurt. Yeah, but don't I have to be your neighbor? No. No, enormous neighbor. Enormous neighbor. They're going to check. They're not going to check nothing. They don't know. Where did he put the paper? It's just something to help. It's from the lawyers. It doesn't have to be named. It's just something that's easy. Yeah. I remember you. Jagerville. Yeah. Hey, you, you name it. Where do you live? Hey, you got to sign it. You got to sign it. Walk the street. You got to sign it, too. Wait, how did you put it? Did you give it back to me? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, they crack it. They smoke pot when the kids go around. But they still, still, yeah. still. Well, so, right here. Physically. See how Kurt signed in? Oh, yeah. Same thing. Please. Mm -hmm. The more the better. Huh? Those people are the best lawyers. Oh. Those people you better watch out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Will you sign this for me before I cross the street? I'm not going to. I'm not going to get involved in that. You have to sign unanimous. They'll find out. No, they can't. Oh, they go. Beans and... Their lawyers will. No, uh, they're lawyers. My lawyer. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. I'm going to tell you, Liam wants to do something. Yeah. He wrote you nothing. I've been along with him for two and a half years. He's showing us out, not them. I lost all charges. I'm going to explain it. I don't know how many ten feet away I had. We lost that home. Thank you. The system don't work. Well, it doesn't. I have to call to my wife every day. They don't do nothing. That's a good area. It's a, it yeah. is. It was a good area. That was the outside clean, the home clean, yeah. rent out. Thank really you so much. What is the name of the neighbor? They live in the same room, the same light as us. They don't want to work. They want to do the mental clinic and do the track. I know, but that's them. I won't get involved. How are you? You want to sign this unanimous? It's to help us not get affected from the crackheads. They choose the crackheads, not us. I gave my money the 23rd. I gave you my Help me with this? Oh, it's in May. Four one oh one. Well, you did you four one one? What did it pay? Was it a dollar? I took them. I think four one oh one. It was a dollar. Yeah. Good. Now you're paid. What? What? Put me down for a Big Mac. Some cheese, please. Ha ha ha. 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 Ha.
so good with the beans, I'll tell you. Oh, and a sandwich with the uh, mustard. Oh. On a homemade salad. Excellent. That's all meat. No bones, no fat. All meat. And then he fell again. And, and you know, like real bit. He, I watch him so closely. And we were in the kitchen, and I was cooking. And uh, he's, you know, walking around and like, put, you know, putting things like, you know, whatever, doing what he does. And all of a sudden, there's like a small rug in the kitchen. He slips on the rug and goes right down on the ground in front of me. You know, I'm like, and he didn't get hurt, but, that, but thank God. And uh, but you know what I mean? It's like I felt like, you know, horrible. Like I did something wrong. My aunt was he falls three, four times a day. Because sometimes it's boom right down because you know with the, his legs lock up and he just. Goes oh, yeah. down. It's like, and the hospice people. One of the women, like my, she made my aunt cry all day the other day. She says, he, if you don't put him in a wheelchair and strap him in a wheelchair 24 hours a day, we're, we're not paying for the hospice care anymore. Because if something happens to him and he falls and breaks his arm, it's gonna look bad. Like that's gonna be a black mark against our company. Can you imagine that? They want to strap my uncle, who can still he can still walk up and down the stairs. You know, of course he has some issues. You know, but he needs to be led around. You know, and help. But to put him, he needs to be strapped down in a chair. That's kind of inhumane, you know. So it's like, uh, you know, I, two pints, I just and extra juice, and four, and French people from the side. Uh, you know what I mean? That the people coming over and all this the medical stuff, they're gonna, they're gonna take them off the hospital program. It's also not the fault. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no that's fault. The thing, that, that's what it's good for, to help them. I mean, that's why know. they don't have to watch them if he's tied down. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. They can sit around and do nothing. You're right. Yeah, that's exactly you know, what it is. He, he said once in a while he has his good days, his moments of clarity, and you know, so I'm gonna change I just have to kind of sit in the corner and it's like, yeah. 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 I did what you said.
Because like 20 people want it. I found one. I knew there was one. They must have moved it. Yeah, they moved it. Oh, no, you keep that. Do you, Hulk? sealed uh, cryovac um, like this and you can see it has the certified Angus beef and it's USDA choice in that which is uh, right underneath prime actually there's one more tier there's a uh, top choice and then it goes prime and uh, prime beef is uh, usually um, a little bit more heavily marbled um, and a little bit more fatty this is just fatty enough for um, and marbled enough for what we need for the corned beef um, and around the St. Patrick's Day we sell about I'd say about 13, 14, maybe 1,500 pounds of great corned beef brisket that we um, trim, tie, and uh, label, you know, and then we put them in uh, clay, clay brines or uh, salt brines, uh, which is just kosher salt in uh, cold water, and then we keep them in the walk-in. And um, what I'll do is take one of these out of the, uh, out of the cryovac, I'll lay it out, and on the bottom you have a couple you know, really hard pieces of uh, fat that you really don't want. You want to keep some of the fat, uh, but you want to kind of just carve out some of the real hard pieces here, uh, some of the little pieces like this, and uh, some of this meat stuff that we have will save to make like our beef pies and uh, stuff that we boil and, uh, you know, that you want to reserve some fat for the uh, pies. But you can see I can take out some of this fat we like to we like to trim it so it's nice and lean people don't like too much fat but when but you need the fat uh when you're boiling it because it kind of absorbs into the water and then when you cook the corn uh vegetables uh the the vegetables will take on that that oily um water and i take on the taste of the corned beef so you won't just have sort of bland boiled vegetables you'll have vegetables that are boiled into the fatty water and it gives it a really nice taste so this brisket right here is pretty much well trimmed. I've taken most of the fat off of the top here and all the hard fat, which you can see right here. And like I said, most of this stuff, uh, we'll, most of this stuff we're gonna, you know, throw away. The pieces that have a little bit of meat, you know, it's good for grinding for pies and you know things like that. But to tie it, basically, what you want to do is lay it flat and then just sort of roll it like this. And when you when you roll it. 
you, you have two ends on the corned beef. You have a lean end, which is this end, which you can see is very lean, and then you have what they call the fatty end. And some people prefer the lean end, some people prefer the fatty end. Some people like the taste of the, the lots of fat. So when I roll it, uh, I'm going to tie it, and uh, after it's already tied and brined, um, when, people, when we take it out of the brine and people want uh, corned beef, they'll say I'd like the fatty end or whatever, so what I'll do is it's all tied, I'll just cut a section where they want, you know, one pound, two pounds, three pounds, or whatever. Uh, they can get, you know, pretty much whatever they want. Um, but this is how I tie it. Now this is something that my father taught me as a kid. Uh, my father he would usually do the trimming because he's a butcher and he didn't want me, you know, working with the sharp knives because um, when you're cutting that corned beef, sometimes when you're cutting the hard fat, you need a really sharp knife because uh, if it's not sharp, it'll actually slip, and uh, you can see how this is very slippery. It can slip and actually, you know, cut you uh, really bad. Uh, my father actually, when he was a kid, was uh, trimming something, and he was trimming it the wrong way, and he slipped with a knife, and my father actually stabbed himself in the leg, and uh, that he actually still has a part of his leg that he can't feel from when he stabbed himself in the leg, and uh, the knife went right down into his bone. Um, so. You can tell how dangerous it is sometimes, you know, to be a butcher. But uh, when you tie it, there's a certain uh, type of way you tie it where my father taught me. And he had a little saying, you need to, you know, loop the loop. And I couldn't get it at first. And, uh, but over the years now, I could actually close my eyes. And, you know, actually, I could actually do it probably blindfolded. You bring it around like this. You want to grab the end. You want to bring it around. And then you want to loop the loop. Let's see, let me do this blindfold. Yep, there you go. Then you want to bring it like this and bring it up. And then you want to tie it real tight like this. Once you tie it real tight like this, you make one little knot like that, and that starts your roll. And then you take the excess string, just kind of cut it, throw away the little piece, and then you basically just continue in you know sections of about two to three inches you loop the loop and you know it seems like a relatively easy tie but it, it's very, it was very difficult for me to get used to and uh, this whole process when you're tying 13 14 1500 pounds of corned beef over a period of a couple days it actually does a lot kind of hurts your hands <laughs> it uh, uh you know by by tying this and and cutting it, you know, you're after doing about 13, 14 pounds, your hands uh, are absolutely destroyed um, just because of, you know, the, the tying process. So I'm going to tie this, the rest of this one up here. And what we do is uh, we always leave a, on the very last tie, we leave a uh, long string on the end so that when we put it in the brine, it has a string hanging out so that we can actually pull the corned beef out, you know, and put it in the pan and bring it up for, uh, for weighing and and uh, for, for cutting slices off. So I'll make the last tie here and I'll leave a big end on there. And a lot of people actually would sometimes prefer corning it without tying it because see how it's rolled like this? When it's corning, you, sometimes people want all, everything exposed so it takes on a better corn, but I feel that if you just tie it not too tight, just tight enough to keep it rolled, that the, you still be able to get that uh, the whole entire piece of meat corn. So now I take a nice long piece like this and cut it. And then what I do is I'll take it, so I just wrap it around my hand like this, bring it, and then I'll bring it back to the uh, the brines here. Now let's go to the back room.